Hey everybody, after the longest radio silence in Stranger Things history, we finally have some tangible stuff to talk about. The internet is buzzing over the reveal of this new Stranger Things creature. Now, this theory will focus primarily on the monster Jonathan and Nancy find in the hospital hallway, but there is clearly more going on here than a simple creature story. For all we know, the gate to the Upside Down is still closed, so it's unlikely that this creature just slipped in from the Upside Down. And considering the great size of this creature in such a small hallway, with nothing knocked over, I think it's more likely than not that this creature was not this size before it entered the hospital. This is likely our first glimpse at a Demogorgon-human hybrid, but that description is not perfect. I believe this season will feature a virus-born human metamorphosis that will make regular human beings into loyal members of the Mind Flayer's hive mind. There are a few shots in the trailer that feature characters that seem to be in a state of delirium, a kind of cold focus that is unwavering even in the presence of loud distractions. I think it's clear that this is an early stage of the mutation process. Season 3 will be heavily influenced by the work of David Cronenberg, a filmmaker most famous for his grotesque depictions of body horror. His style has become so recognizable over the years that Rick and Morty even featured a Cronenberg Universe episode where every human turned into a mutated mess, lovingly referred to as a Cronenberg. I would say his most famous film is The Fly remake, in which Jeff Goldblum, following a teleportation mistake, finds himself slowly turning into a fly. His human form begins to wither away and whatever is growing underneath is anything but human. You see, this is the kind of slow burn transformation that I hope to see in Stranger Things Season 3. But how does this all begin? In the trailer, we see Billy in what is seemingly the pool shower, taking a closer look at a wound on his left arm. And one of the episode titles for season three is The Bite. Now at this point, we should all know that the Duffer Brothers always release fake episode titles before each season release, you know, to, to hide as much of the truth as possible. But I would say on average, three to four of the fake episode titles end up being true, even if they are originally listed in the wrong order. So it's fair to assume that there is a bite, and Billy is clearly a character who gets bit. And after seeing all the rats in the trailer, saying that anyone in Season 3 gets bit is maybe the safest assumption ever made. The trailer and the feeding time teaser lead me to believe that all of these rats are the carriers of the virus, and it would seem that any direct contact from them, such as a bite, would eventually lead to a mutation of this kind. Although I get the feeling that these rats will not escape the underground tunnels until late in Season 3. Possibly after the Mind Flayer directs them to bite as many people as possible, you know, Pied Piper style. As for where the rats got this new virus strain from, I would say that that bit of escaping black mist at the end of Season 2 had something to do with that. And it likely took root somewhere down in the tunnels beneath Hawkins attempting to create a new hive in our dimension. Now, for the sake of clarity, and in the spirit of Stranger Things lore, I will hereby refer to this new virus strain as the Demo Virus. I'm sorry, what? I said, uh, Demodogs. Like Demogorgon and dogs. Like, you put them together, it sounds pretty badass. How is this important right now? It's not, I'm sorry. To help better diagnose this Demo Virus, let's compare it to another virus that is spread through animal bites, such as rabies which in the vast majority of cases, the infected present symptoms that could be associated with zombie-like behavior, such as hyperactivity, excitability, erratic behavior, along with insomnia, anxiety, confusion, agitation, hallucinations, excess saliva, hence the foaming mouth, problems swallowing, and, strangely enough, fear of water. Now clearly, I'm not saying that people who have rabies are zombies, but this does explain why every rabies-infected animal also seems to be hyper-aggressive. Now, using rabies as the basis for Billy's infection, we can expect him to exhibit similar symptoms as he deals with whatever additional side effects this demo virus brings. The earliest signs of rabies are flu-like symptoms such as fever, muscle weakness, tingling, and burning at the bite location. And in the trailer, we can see Billy appear surprised by how much worse his bite looks seemingly 30 minutes to an hour after getting bit. But the question becomes, why Billy? Why is Billy the one who gets infected? Is Billy patient zero? Well, we know that the underground tunnels still exist in Hawkins, and in one of the leaked photographs from the set of Season 3, we see a copy of the Hawkins Post newspaper. 
There is a story in the bottom left corner about the local pool being closed for about two weeks just before the beginning of season three. The story details how pool staff discovered leaks in the pool's state-of-the-art filtration system. The leak caused a rapid buildup of bacteria and algae in the pool waters. Now, the pool owners said that they had never seen an algae buildup quite like this before. You see, this is fantastic world building. And I hope somebody in the show mentions this on screen in case not everybody gets a chance to see this newspaper. We know that Billy is a lifeguard at the same pool this never before seen bacteria spike occurred, which is evidence of a close proximity to an upside down tunnel and the escaping rats likely chewed through the filtration system, which probably introduced this kind of bacteria into the water before they closed the pool for cleaning. All of this happened where Billy works, and we know he ends up getting bit, which means he was likely swimming late one night, and while closing up the pool he gets bit by a rat. As far as how the demo virus would first affect Billy, there is a shot in the trailer of a man with green eyes seemingly in the midst of a slow transformation, as black bloodshot lines seem to fill his eyes. Now, Billy has blue eyes, so I think this could just be blue eyes under some yellow lighting. Either way, they look very similar, so this could be Billy. I also get the impression that he has a hood over his head based on the shadow on the side of his face. This trailer shot is stuck immediately before the shot of women in tight pants at Jazzercise or something. So it's like they want you to think that Billy is walking around creeping on women as he tries to hide his mutations. And for a character like Billy who is very popular with the ladies, it might be interesting to see how his ego handles these grotesque body changes. It almost seems like karma is finally catching up to him. Much like the transformation in The Fly, I would really like to see Billy remain human long enough to see his reaction to his own mutations. Just have him notice the infection on his arm getting worse, and over a three or four day period, the infection spreads up and down his arm, slowly mutating just his arm. He just needs to maintain his humanity long enough for a love interest or his sister Max to see what is happening to him. It would just mean that much more when he finally reaches a tipping point that forces him to collapse into a pile of pus and rise up as this new Cronenberg creature. So, does this mean that the creature we see stand up in the hallway is actually Billy? That answer hinges on one factor. Is this creature the result of a demo virus infection on a single human, or is this creature an amalgamation of numerous infected people? Part of me doesn't like the idea that a single infected human could eventually mutate into a creature of this size. Where does all that extra body mass come from? I mean, you know, sure, any werewolf movie has a larger creature break out of a smaller human, but it's not this extreme. The trailer leads me to believe that Jake Busey's character, Bruce, is infected and is walking down the hospital hallway before collapsing into a pile of pus and slowly reforming as this creature in front of Jonathan. But given his non-mutated appearance at that time, I'd say he was quite a while from just melting. I mean, if he were sweating profusely, that would be one thing, but here I think something different happened. But how did Bruce even get infected in the first place? Now, it's possible that Bruce gets bit by a rat very similar to the one that bit Billy, but uh, is there any chance that Bruce's wounds could have been inflicted by Billy himself? Is there any connection between these two characters? Well, ignoring the fact that Bruce is a journalist for the Hawkins Post newspaper and works alongside Jonathan and Nancy, two people who already know Billy, the only other link I can see is that it was the Hawkins Post that published the story about the pool closing earlier in the season. I can't find any information on this page about who wrote that article. But it's a small town. Odds are that Bruce wrote that article. He probably even went to the pool to get quotes from the pool owners about the algae buildup. But what's interesting is, there is an episode in Season 3 called The Case of the Missing Lifeguard. And although there is evidence to suggest that this missing lifeguard is the woman that Eleven sees drowning in the void, uh, Billy is likely in a condition where he can't be seen with his shirt off. So. <laughs> He's sure not showing up to work. Billy could be in hiding and Bruce is on the case trying to track down the missing lifeguard that is Billy. Maybe he finds Billy and he is losing his mind, barely holding onto his humanity, and Billy bites the reporter repeatedly before running off into the night. It makes for much cleaner storytelling if every infected person has the exact same incubation period. But if that were true, how could Billy have a slow mutation period over the course of a few days while Bruce transforms into a creature so soon after getting bit that his clothes are still bloody? 
Well, it stands to reason that if a person was bit more than one time, perhaps caught in a swarm of rats or bit by a larger carrier, that person would likely mutate much faster. And we see Bruce walking down this hospital hallway with multiple bloody spots on his shirt, likely from multiple bite wounds. So I'd say it's fair to assume that Bruce could be the only infected human making up the form of this creature. I would feel much better about this scenario if Bruce was wandering down the hall in a delirious fever and had stumbled upon this pile of pus in the hallway thinking it was a hallucination, before he touches it and is absorbed into it, adding to the overall size of the existing creature. It's also possible that Billy had died earlier in the season, and after his body was put in the morgue it congealed together with other infected bodies. This kind of combination of bodies would explain the increase in body mass and also explain the numerous limbs this creature has. Although part of me would like these people to be absorbed while they were still living, the look on Bruce's face is almost euphoric despite his sickly appearance. If each infected person is in a state of delirium, they might not even protest being absorbed, because in a way they are already a part of a new collective consciousness or the already established hive mind. I just think it's more meaningful if the infected people join this creature willingly. Assuming for a second that this additional body mass gain is never explained, and it's just one of the effects of the mutation process, the only reason I can think of for the Duffer brothers to do this is to make the reveal that much more intimidating. There's something great about a scene in which a character thinks they have the upper hand or fully understand a potential threat, only for the other person to reveal they are much more formidable than they first appeared. And in any science fiction story, this can manifest itself as a kind of monster reveal. That moment where they start second guessing picking a fight with that particular person, it's just it's priceless every time I see it. As much as the unexplained gain of body mass would bug me, I think I could overlook it if they did it for the sake of a really cool reveal of this nature. I mean, this would essentially become the Hulk, and I've never had a problem with that. But the fact that there's a human spine on the creature's leg signals to me that this is likely a combination of more than one person, or this creature went through a blender before it stood up, because if this was one person, the spine should likely still be in place on the creature's back. This could be evidence of more than one person joining together. Regardless of any of that, if every infected person eventually turns into a version of this Cronenberg creature, there is nothing keeping all those from eventually merging together to create an even bigger monster for Levin to fight. After someone is bitten by a rabies infected animal, it can take between 4 to 12 weeks for a person to show any rabies symptoms, but it appears to be different for everyone because some incubation periods are as long as six years, while others are so brief that the infected person will turn rabid within a few days. Due to the vast discrepancy in how quickly rabies symptoms appear from person to person, I would argue that this demo virus could affect each person a little differently, which would allow certain characters to be infected and not realize it or not show symptoms until they are already deeply entrenched alongside uninfected people which would amount to hive mind double agents hiding inside the group, which would be a great nod to the paranoia in John Carpenter's The Thing, a film the Duffers have lightly referenced many times in the show already. I think it's fair to say that anyone who gets infected by the demo virus would immediately link up with the Mind Flayer's hive mind, meaning the hive mind would immediately know everything that character knows, although I could see the Mind Flayer choosing to remain dormant in certain characters to keep a low profile while gaining new information. Now, who knows if that's even possible, but it could make for some great storytelling and some decent reveals later in the season. It remains unclear if a person could become infected by rat droppings in the water supply or in a contaminated batch of scoops of Hoy ice cream, but if so, it's plausible this secondhand exposure could produce a less intense version of the demo virus infection, or <laughs> nothing more than some cheap toilet humor. But I'm looking at you, Dustin. I believe the story will end up very similar to Dawn of the Dead, in which people find shelter inside a shopping mall while zombie-like creatures roam the parking lot outside. And we know they end up fighting in the mall, you know, the Battle of Starcourt, so it's plausible that they are hiding in the mall before the battle starts. The final battle will likely feature a horde of countless infected people, and this Cronenberg creature will have grown to an incredible size, but still small enough to fit under the high ceilings of the food court at the mall. It is very likely that Dr. Owens will return for season 3 and take an active role in creating a serum or cure for this demo virus. 
but I just hope that once a character turns into a complete Cronenberg, that no amount of serum will turn them back into a human. That would just be insulting to the audience, and it removes a lot of the stakes if everything can just be undone. I could see Mike getting infected, but not mutating. Uh, and maybe the Mind Flayer would, would lay dormant in him and eventually reveal that he was a double agent the whole time. I mean, that would produce some meaningful conflict and wouldn't cause any long-lasting malice between them after Mike is cured. Considering how positive the vibes are to start Season 3, I think it's very clear that this season has to end on a very low note. Meaning a couple popular characters will die and Hawkins will be evacuated for good. Considering how harshly Mike speaks to Will in the trailer about growing up and leaving their youth in the past, I bet there is a scene in the last episode of Mike grabbing something out of his basement during the evacuation. Maybe the D&D board, as his mother tries to hurry him along, before stopping to look back one more time and savor the sight of his basement and the empty table, the symbol of a childhood innocence he can never return to. But from now on, He'll do everything he can to not abandon his friends and their friendship. Well, uh, that concludes the theory. Uh, sorry if it's a bit of a brain dump, but there were a lot of possibilities I wanted to cover. I have a couple more theory videos in mind at the moment that I hope to release soon, but it's honestly kind of hard to find motivation to make videos if my most recent video underperforms, you know, it's kind of just human nature. About a year ago I made a funny Stranger Things Season 1 dub called Stranger Games, and it just it got very little attention, so that drained me a bit, and uh, I spent a lot of time on it and very few people watched it, so check that out, I, I would really appreciate it. I'm, I'm very happy with the final result, I, it's just it's a pretty goofy fun time. Sound of ultimate suffering. And just like that, there she was. Joyce Byers. My first love. And no, I'm not counting Christy Carpenter. So, check it out. I'll link it in the description and at the end of the video. I would still like to make a version for season 2 and eventually season 3 at some point in the future. So tell me. What do you think of this theory? Do you think that people will get infected by rat bites and turn into Cronenbergs? Do you think there will be more than one creature, or just an ever-growing single collection of infected people? And do you think that one of the kids in the main group could secretly be a hive mind double agent? Let me know in the comments below, you know, and uh, hit me up on Twitter at Planet Calvin. Let me know what you think. I'm really interested. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and uh, thanks for watching.